Hi there, and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and today I get to be here with Robin Carnes, who is here with us to share her story about how God has showed up in huge ways through just a really devastating time in her life and how a ministry, uh, and part of it in the form of a jewelry line, mm-hmm. were born out of it. I just love her story, and I can't wait for her to just share her heart with you. And Robin, thank you for coming and being with us. And I know this is not an easy thing for you to talk about. And I just thank you so much for just letting God use you to encourage and inspire other women. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Well, before we get started, we like Mm -hmm. to ask our guests, what is your favorite prayer closet? Where do you go to feel close to God? Well, I did have an actual prayer closet whenever I was living in Texas. I mean, cleared it out you know, had it all set up. So you Um, had an actual closet, like the war room closet. The war room closet. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And I remember sitting on the floor. It was after, it was after Zach passed. Um, And I looked up at the door and, you know, the colonial style doors, you know, the, and there was the cross and I was like, how have I never seen this before? You know, but (laughs) that's how God shows up. There's, you know, he shows me little things like that. Um, and then I sent it to my pastor. He was like, yeah, that's what those doors were actually created for. I said, I've never known that. Um, so I had an actual prayer closet. And before that, it was the bathroom because sometimes prayer gets a little, um, you know, you need a private place, very private. And I would have, I, I would feel like I would need to hide from the kids, you know, because <laughs> it would get so intense. Like, you know, I wouldn't want them to, you know, kind of be well my grandson be a little scared or whatever but um and but it is still I think it is the bathroom and that's the place and I, now I live alone but it seems like that's still the the place that I go and um that's where it gets that's where it's the deepest let's put it that way yeah, yeah. No, I definitely have, uh, I've joked before that sometimes it's the shower because even the bathroom, if I don't lock the door or even if I lock the door, they're beating it down trying to get in. Yes, yeah, yeah. But when they hear the shower going, they're not as likely to try and get in. They think, okay, yeah, she's really busy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really not available. Yeah, I can't go in there. So yeah, that's my place. That's right. Well, so I didn't mention Zach in the introduction. You just mentioned him. Let's just jump in to your story, Robin. Um, just yeah. tell us, tell us about your son, Zach, and his story and just the inspiration behind why you're here today. Well, um, Zach was my firstborn and he was, I mean, we grew up together. You know, I, I had him when I was 17 years old. Um you know, I just had to get married at 16 and start a family. And so I had Zach and then I had my daughter um, whenever I was 19. So I was a very young mom. Um, but Zach and I, we, we grew up together. He was my best friend. He was my buddy. He was my partner, honestly, in life. You know, he was, um, you know, people would joke around about how he was such a mama's boy. All of my kids are, you know, we're, we're very close. I say all of my kids. I had three and then I adopted one and then I have stepdaughters. So I have a lot of kids. Um, But he was the oldest, he was 29. And you know, whenever their dad passed away 11 years ago, Zach struggled, he had struggled with depression. He was like diagnosed whenever he was young, really young, that he was depressed, you know, had the clinical depression. And back then, you know, the way I grew up that, you know, it was a sign of weakness if you went for counseling, you know, it was a sign of, um, or, you know, your God wasn't big enough, you know, for you to, you know, so it was kind of like, you just keep praying and you just keep going. You don't do anything about it, you know, um, other than just trust the Lord, trust the Lord. So, um, he wasn't on, he was on medication, but then whenever he got into high school, he was a senior and he did not want to take medicine anymore. He just did not want to take it anymore. And I really didn't, you know, and then his dad passed away. So then he started using drugs to numb and all that. So we went through, that's where it started with the, with the addiction. And we went through, you know, well, years of that, years of it. And he went into a rehab in Florida for, um, it was faith-based rehab. And it, I mean, it was 
great for him for four years, I mean, for four months. And then he came to Texas. I brought him to Texas and he went into another rehab. And whenever he got out of that rehab, we went to church. Uh, we were really involved in our church. And then whenever he went with us, he signed us up for everything. And I mean, everything, Every, they were having an outreach and he signed us up for everything. And I said, Zachary, little kids, are not my calling that's your calling I don't want to do that hot backpack day back to school bash thing you know and he was like <laughs> come on so he would drag like we did everything together as a family we really did everything together so he drug me there you know and I'm at the end of the water slide getting little kids off and they're all wet and but he was he was loved by everyone everyone that met him that knew him loved him and I, everyone will tell you that everyone loved him. He was everyone's best friend. He could make everyone feel like they were the most special person. And um, a lot of his best friends were my best friends. You know, he hung out with he hung out with me. You know, he was always like the, you know, we, we would go to see movies. We would go out to dinner. You know, like he was and and with our with my friends, our friends. Um, and he was just this kid that loved. He loved the Lord. And he always wanted to be better. He, he was baptized more times than me. You know, I just got baptized again Sunday um, for the second time. But uh, he just, it was like he was the one who was getting it right, you know, because he, even though he would carry shame and guilt, you know, and I would have to, I would try to talk him out of that whenever he would fall. Um, he would still run back to the Lord. Like he, he would run back to him. And he was um, chosen to go on a miss missions trip with our church. And he thought, wow, like I really like made it to another level, you know. And he testified with the juvenile um, detention center, the kids there, and shared his testimony of his struggles. And um, we really believed that, you know, it, wouldn't have, it wasn't going to end like this. But in saying that, um, I knew that he was struggling. He went to work out of town with my youngest son. They were, they're 10 years apart in age. And I knew he was struggling. And I had just came back from Florida from taking care of my mom. And the night before he passed, I was about to, I was so tired. I was exhausted. There was a lot of things going on in our life before this. And I just said, Lord, I prayed all the prayers a mom can pray, you know, um, he's in your hands. And that was what I prayed. And I went to bed and the next morning I got the call from my youngest son and I, you know, it's not what I expected. I thought, Lord, I've given you my life. You know, like I have surrendered everything to you. I have, you know, why now? Why now? But in that moment, Whenever I got the call, I remember screaming like, Satan, you think that you're going to break me. I, I know what this is. And you think you're going to break me. And you think you're going to stop me from serving the Lord. And you're not. And then my second thing was, Lord, please, please don't let my kids turn away from you. Because they had lost their dad. You know, we had my brother even lost a child. She was 15, my niece. So we've gone through a lot of, our family has really gone through a lot of stuff like our whole lives. So, um, and then with Zach serving the Lord like he did, you know, for the, the last four years of his life, he was, you know, he still struggled, but he was an usher and he was there for every Thanksgiving. He was the Easter bunny. He was Santa Claus. He was everything at our church, he would just dive in, you know, and just, so um, anyways, I prayed, Lord, just don't let my kids turn away from you. And in that moment, God answered my prayer immediately. And it was my youngest one who I was really worried about, you know, and he called one of our associate pastors. He immediately called the pastor and asked the pastor to go to the house to check on me. And I knew that he still trusted the Lord. So um, it was the day after Zach passed, I received a message from a girl that 
was my friend's sister. I mean, my sister's friend, you know, they were growing up and they used to go to church together. And this is a girl, she's very shy. She doesn't speak, you know, she, and she had a word that I knew the Lord gave her. And it was a prophetic word. And it, it was about how um, the enemy had tried to take my family out for years and um, that he wasn't prepared for me and the battle because he would lose this one and that I would go and share. And this was not going to break me. So I held on to that the whole, I mean, this whole time, you know, I've gone back to read it many times whenever I felt like there's no way I'm this person. There's no way I can carry this out. There's no way. But that was what I said to the Lord, you cannot let me live here without using this. I cannot imagine a day um, having to stay here and not be able to come home with him. You know, I cannot imagine a day on this earth without you using this. And that's where I left it. And I didn't know how it was going to happen. I mean, I went through... One, one of the things that I have talked with other moms about, because I've met, there's been a lot of moms that I have met and I've put a warrior cuff bracelet on them. I've given them letters. I've given them encouragement because there's been many and that are kind of, that I knew that have lost their sons. And immediately they think of me and they message me well, or I'm messaging them, you know. Um, but after not grieving properly, if you, there's, there is a way that you don't grieve properly if you don't know, um, but you know, tuck it down and keep going and keep going. And I did that whenever I lost uh, my kid's father. So, you know, I said this time, I'm not going to mess this grieving up. Like I'm going to grieve and I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what, how bad it hurts, whatever. If I'm going to be mad, I'm going to be mad. You know, if I'm going to be sad, I'm going to be sad, but I am going to grieve. And that's what I coach other moms. Like, don't let anyone put expectations on you on when they think you need to be over your crying or whatever. You lost part of you. I mean, like part of you died that day. And um, I think that's one of the things that I want to, I mean, that's what I, that's what I tell them. You know, if you want to be mad, you can be mad at God. I was mad. Like, I know he could have done it differently. But I do know that in the end, he did what was best. You know, I mean, in that scripture, you know, he works all things for our good. It might not seem like it as a mom because you lost your, your child. But for Zach, he did what was best. And since we've lost Zach, I mean, the Lord has been so gracious in giving my daughter the dreams. <laughs> God gives her the dreams. He's given my brother prophetic dreams with Zach in them. Um, and that has been, I don't get them. I, I might get a visit, you know, like Zach showing up like, mom, check out what's in my pockets. You know, and you, look, look, look at what I got. But I don't know what's in his pockets. Um, but I've had other people have dreams of him in heaven in the middle of a field of tulips. They didn't know that was my favorite flower. Zach does. And he's in a, you know, field of tulips and he's with all these kids around him because that was his, that's, so he's still very much alive and he's still doing God's work, but he's there. And um, I want moms to remember that they're, they're up there. They're still doing work. They're not just up there sitting around with Jesus. I mean, they work, you know, they have things to do and, um, and the Lord, He's just been so good. He's been so good. And my kids have actually grown closer to him through this. You know, heaven became more real. Um, and I, I just love what he's done through this. Robin, I feel like what you're saying and just the message that you have about, I don't know, just for me, it's, it's unbelievable that you so soon, I mean, June was one year, right? Yes. And that you can look at this and, you know, when we spoke last week, you even said, 
I can see God doing good things through this. And I don't know. I think, I don't know if I could say that God has definitely gifted you with vision, you know, with, with eternal vision and he's gifted you with strength that comes from him, oh, yeah. him I guess. and like a supernatural <laughs> yes. of what he is doing through this really just yeah. tragic thing of losing your son. And so I don't know. I just feel like that is really powerful for you to be able to actually at this point, not 20 years later, but right now to be able to say, God is doing his, doing the best through this. And yeah. I think, um, what would you say to a mom right now that is either struggling with a child that, that is, um, struggling with depression or addiction, or if they've lost their child to these things that can't say that right now? Your, your prayers are still out there. You know, all the prayers that you've prayed, even if you can't right now, you know, or you feel like you can't say a word, all the prayers you've prayed, they're still there. And God will honor those prayers. It might not be the way you think it should be, but trust his plan because he's still a good God. He's still just as good today as he was the day before Zach died. He is. I know that, and I would also, you know, for the moms that are dealing with a child with, you know, depression, um, seek counseling. I'm a big advocate for mental health, you know, care. Seek a counselor. If they don't fit, find another one. You know, we were, we were very fortunate. We had, you know, spiritual counselors and therapists um, and that worked with us before Zach ever died. I mean, he was seeing one, two. Um, and then if they're, if they're prescribed something, take the pill, <laughs> you know, like take it, do whatever you need to do to take care of your mental health um, until he heals you. And if he, heal, you know, if it's here or if it's whenever you go home, but take the pill, whatever works and don't feel guilty about it. We have, there's such a stigma about that, that Christians can't take medication, you know, or, well, you can take blood pressure medicine, but not anything for, you know, your mental health, don't alter your mind, you know, just, and that's bull. It just is. It just is, you know, and um, so, that, yeah, I would definitely seek, seek counseling, um, spiritual guidance for sure. Uh, definitely reach out to your close people. You know, don't be afraid to admit it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Um, and I think that's what I love about, I mean, Zach's story. He would be ashamed, but he was always honest, you know, like, which you could read in many ways, you know, he knew if he was struggling or not, but he was honest about it, you know, whenever he would, I mean, it might take him a little bit to actually own it, but you know, he would just keep running back to the Lord. And, um, and I think as moms, that's what we have to do. I mean, well, that is what we have to do. And I pray that, you know, that God will be gracious with the moms that have lost their kids and that the moms would have an open heart and open ears, you know, open eyes and, and see because God's showing them if they open their eyes in their hearts and know that he's good they're going to see his hand in everything they will because it is and um you know through zach's story through zach's life and death you know there's been so many people saved i mean they have been saved radically changed and saved through his story and um it was because he lived a life and he, he lived his life not he didn't preach it, you know, he lived it. I'm a, somebody who loves the Lord and I struggle. And we all do in some way. And, um, yeah. and one has, I've realized one has nothing to do with the other whenever, you know, it really doesn't because no. he loved. Yeah, and I, I think that is so important because 
there is, I think, uh, I think a couple of things that you said are really just so important. I think the first one is this idea that going to counseling means that your faith isn't strong enough or mm -hmm. taking yeah. medication for clinical depression means yeah. that you haven't prayed hard enough or that you yeah. don't trust God. And I think that's dam damaging and dangerous and it absolutely, is. you know, I think it's something that needs to be talked about. Yes. Um, and I think the shame, whether it's oh. mental illness, whether it's right. addiction, whether it's something that, you know, anything, any sin, you know, there's the, right. the enemy would love for us to stay in our stay isolation right and to keep mm -hmm. admitting that we're struggling because we want to look like a perfect Christian yeah. and just listening to the picture of Zach and mm -hmm. his just amazing love for God and the way he kept running back. I mean, it reminds me of David, King David, who just struggled with sin and struggled yeah. with um, different temptations and struggled yeah. with, you know, all sorts of things, but he was a yeah. man after God's own heart because his heart yes. was constantly going back to God. And I mean, he yeah. would begin these Psalms of anguish and torment and even rage against God. I mean, just God, how mm -hmm. could you do this? Why, how long are you going to let me suffer? Yeah. And then they would end in this thanksgiving and praise and he would bring it back. Um, so I don't yeah. know. I think that goes along with it too, just um, yeah. from both sides, from a person struggling with sin or yeah. struggling with mental illness or addiction, right. or anything yeah. to be open with God, but also for a parent yeah. struggling with just being so angry with God for not delivering their child in the way that we want them to. And yeah. just not to be afraid to be angry. And like you were talking about that grief. And I think, you know, yeah. just not to be afraid to just let it out. God can handle our anger. He can yes. handle yeah. frustrations and, and yeah. That's what the moms that I've met with, that's what they've said. You know, you know, they've messaged, um, I feel so angry today and I, and I feel so bad about it. I'm so mad and I don't want to be mad at God. And I said, no, he expects it. Do you think he doesn't know? He knows. Tell him about it. Talk with him. The most important thing is talk with him about it. You know, I mean, me and me and the Lord, we had some serious talks, you know, and I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that he, that my Zach is there. What if he wasn't? I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine. And just allow God to carry you through because he's right there with you. And moms, I know you're, <laughs> for the first probably five months, you're really, you're so numb and you will have small encounters with the Lord where you'll feel his presence. And then there's times that you will sit and be, you're so numb, you don't feel anything but he's still there. He's still, I mean, he's, he's still there. He's just holding you until you can utter a word, you know? And I think that that the most important thing though is, you know, don't put limitations on yourself. Don't put expectations on yourself. Don't, don't let anyone else tell you, you know, when you should grieve or not grieve or how long you can grieve or, um, and, and I have, there was one of the questions you asked, you know, did anyone, say the wrong things. Many people said the wrong things, um, the wrong things. I bet many people said exactly what, you know, you need, you know, which would be, I don't know what you're going through. What can I do? Can I just come sit with you? And they would just, you know, I had friends that would just come sit and hold my hand, not say anything. And sometimes that's the best. Just sit, you know, just sit next to me because there's, there's no words. I mean, I know, you know, there's no words and, um, husbands love your wives through this, love your wives through this. And, um, I mean, I'll say I did not have that after I lost Zach and, um, but I, you know, I, there's this thing that the Lord gave me a couple months ago about, you know, you can't live a life, um, with any regrets, honestly, with any regret and live freely with Jesus. And it's, that's so true.
true. I, I could have gone back and said, I, you know, I regret that I didn't do this with Zach. I regret that, you know, I was happy that he got that job down there. You know, I, I could regret all of that, but I can't and live freely with Jesus. I can't regret any of it. I can't regret any of the past because, I mean, that's where it's made me who I am today. It's brought me to this place. And, um, and the Lord, through all of this, I mean, I have moved my whole entire life to Florida um, and my kids are in Texas. And, um, but I can't even explain all of the blessings, you know, that have come and the joy that I have in my life being very alone. Um, but it's a freedom to grieve and a freedom to grow and a, um, and the Lord has just blessed me so much. And during this, during this year. So you know, we talked a little bit about how there were people that said some things that weren't helpful and people that said and did things that were helpful. And you kind of touched on the helpful things like, yeah, not trying to pretend like, you know, <laughs> yeah. what you're going through. Um, right. I would imagine not just avoid, the temptation might be to avoid someone going through deep pain because you don't know what to say, yes. but not to avoid right. that person. Um, right. Yeah. And just engage with love and even silence. Um, just, what, uh, yeah. 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 What are some other helpful things? And then if you would not mind sharing one or two of the not helpful things, just specifically or generally, if you, if you would feel comfortable oh, doing that. Um, like my, one of my friends that was, she was one of Zach's best friends also. Um, and I think honestly, I was very blessed in that because I know that that helped my, my grief because, you know, I wasn't the only one grieving him and, and the loss, the whole church, you know, it was on a Sunday that he passed and the whole church, you know, grieved. And we, I had amazing support from our church family, the, his funeral, that was the best, I want to say production, but because it was so big and amazing, um, it was, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And it was everything that it, I just said, you run with it. I just want people to know Jesus through this. That's what I need y'all to do. That was it, you know, and, um, they did, they did it an amazing, amazing job. Mm -hmm. I had, um, one of my friends, she was like, can I get you anything? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I need. And um, then I was like, okay, a BC powder, BC powders for headaches. Um, okay, maybe a, a BC for my head. I've got a headache. And she said, okay. And she just came, she came to the house. She had this box of BCs. Um, she calls them powder nasties. <laughs> this is her name for them, powder nasties. But she brought me a pack of BCs and I think a Coke, maybe it was a Coke. And she just sat next to me and held my hand in the recliner. I mean, I was in the recliner, she was next to me and she just held my hand. She just, tears rolled down her face, my face, you know, and that was it. Um, of course, we had a lot of food. They were, um, our church brought food for, well, they would bring dinner, but it would also be for, and bring breakfast for the next morning for us. So that went on for a few weeks, which thank you, Jesus, because Yes, no. And being the mom, I think that's the hardest part is being the mom. You want to make sure that you're taking care of everybody because that's our job. That's what we do all the time. But in this time, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't. No, you can't. And um, I had another friend that just drove herself. She lived about three hours away from me. And she came, she packed her bag and she came and she was just at the house. And she was just, you know, praying in the corner or clean in the kitchen or go into my daughter's house to spend the night with her to watch the babies. So, you know, Brianna could cry, could grieve. Um, she was just that, that person. And so I would, that, that's a good friend, <laughs> you know, that is a really good friend that will just pack a bag and say, okay, I'm out. I'm going, I'm going there. Um, so those were the people that, uh, I, we have more friends than that. They, I, I had a lot of really great support. And then the ones that um, I had one person tell me that it was a few months later, there was a little thing that happened and 
her son was going through a divorce and he had been married and the daughter-in-law was like a daughter to her. And um, she said to me, she said, you know, it's like, I've, it's like we've lost her. It's like, you know, it's a death and it's, it, we're, I'm grieving. And, you know, you know what that's like, you know, I think you understand where I'm coming from. And I thought, I'm not going to say what I really am feel like saying to you, I am going to just let you say what you're going to say. And then I'm going to hang up the phone because I've been through, you know, separation, divorce, and it is a death. It, it is like a death, but not the death of a child or even a real death. It's something that, so that was one of the things. And then someone else um, made a comment that because I lost Zach and he, I was closest to him. Um, he was just the one, I had these periods, that's the way we are as moms. We have these, you know, at this point, this season, this child might need you more than this child, you know, but it's not like, you know, it's for a season. Well, Zach was in the season and um, they said, you know, maybe he was a distraction for you with, for my relationship with God. Oh. And I said, no. God doesn't take them home to because it's a distraction. So there were a there were a lot of things, and um, but at the same time, you know that's where the prayer closet really came in. And sometimes I would just go in there and lay on the floor and go to sleep, and I would just be alone in there. But um, God was my everything. I mean, even in, I, he was the only one who could bring me comfort. And um, so whenever people would fail and, you know, do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing, I would still think about Zach because if anyone knew Grace, my son, I would think about him. I mean, I still do because that was him. He would be the one to tell me, Mom, now you know that they didn't mean it, or mom, you know, he always saw the best in everyone. He never had an unkind word to say about anybody. And if you did, he would talk you down. Like he was the one who would talk us down. And um, yeah, so I just would extend grace or put up a healthy boundary. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, and there are times for that too. And it's, yeah, there are definitely times for that as well. Um, yeah. So we talked about something last week that I just really, it, it just really struck me that there is someone out there that needs to hear this. And can you talk about um, when you lost Zach and your just feelings of fear that because he passed in a state of having not, I, I don't know right. what you, having not confessed that last sin that you were afraid that maybe he wasn't with the Lord. Can you just share your yeah. fears? Because I know that I've heard other, other people that have lost their children yeah. that have this fear that they're not with the Lord. Um, can you just yeah. share, share what God has taught you about that? Yes. And the hope he's yes. given you. Well, you know, we know that God looks on the heart and, and that that's what he looks at, you know, and even though we, we know that we've also been taught, you know, by, you know, whenever I was younger, that if you die in sin, you know, that's, you're just automatically go to hell that you don't make it to heaven. And, you know, and I went on believing that well for, for a long time. But it, then as I got older and I grew in my faith and I grew in my relationship with the Lord, I thought that doesn't make, I don't understand that. Like, I know that there's a real heaven, a real hell, but I don't understand that because now I know the love of Jesus. And I know that like that Zach was the most loving person, but my immediate, my immediate thought was, God, please tell me, please tell me that he is with you. And I, it took, it took a minute. <laughs> it was actually, I, I, the day after he died, I got the, um, 
I got the prophetic word from one of, you know, somebody that I knew. And then two days after that, I had a dream. God gave me a dream where there were gold crosses all in the sky. I mean, like all bright, shiny gold crosses. And one was really big and close. And then there was other ones just all in the sky. And I knew what that was. I knew that that was redemption. And I knew that that was people that were going to come to know the Lord through Zach's death. And I knew Zach was there. I knew he was there. And then I had a vision of him sitting, (laughs) sitting next to Jesus. I mean, he was just sitting with him. Um, And then my daughter had a dream. I mean, so God, God really answered these things, you know, and then, so that's whenever I said, okay, now this makes sense to me. I know Zach's in heaven. And now I know that that's not always the case, you know, but I know that you loved Zach. I know that you loved him. And, you know, in Psalms 139, where it talks about, I know you're, and I held on to that for years before I ever lost Zach with, you know, struggles with the kids. You know, you know, they're there. I would say they're, you know, waking up, laying down, like, you know, everything, you know, everything, you know, every thought, you know what they're thinking, you know, what choice they're going to make, you know, everything. And I knew in that moment that he loved my son so much that he loved him so much that he says, okay, come home. Because he didn't want Zach to hurt anymore. He wanted him to be whole and he healed. And I knew, I knew that. But then I was mad. I went through my grief and I got really mad because I was like, okay, Zach, you knew. Why would you do this to me? You are my best friend. You are my buddy. I don't even know how to do anything around here. You know, and he used to say, mom, you know, what would you do if I wasn't around? I was like, but you are. So can you come help me do this? Cause we, he was my part project buddy, you know? And, um, uh, and it was, um, I share this story on my website, but one of a friend of mine who, um, I did women's conferences with, she tried to call me one day and I was very mad that day. I was very mad. I called my worship pastor or I messaged him and I said, I need a playlist of music. It is not secular music, but I need a playlist of music, you know, like metal, heavy metal or rock and roll, whatever to listen to, because I'm mad today and I'm going to stay mad today because I'm going to grieve properly. Okay. So I am, um, so I'm listening to this music and she keeps trying to call. And I said, I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm mad. I don't want to talk to anybody today. And she says, I have to ask you a question. The Lord asked me to ask you a question. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it today. And then the next morning I woke up and I said, oh, I've got to call Miss D. Okay, I got to call her. So I called and um, as soon as I heard her voice, I started to cry. And she said to me, she said, "Um, how are you? I said, I can talk today or I can listen today. And she said to me, she said, okay, and this was for her because she's, you know, she was brought up um, in a Pentecostal church also, which, I'm, you know, it doesn't matter about the denomination, but, um, but she really believed like that also that, you know, you would die and go to hell in, in, in your sin. So she said that God asked her to ask me if I ever got mad at Eve. And I said, what? Eve? Like Adam and Eve? Eve? What are you talking about? And she said, yes. Did you ever get mad at Eve? And I said, no. She says, well, why not? I said, because she was deceived. She said, there you have your answer. And I said, oh. And she said, I felt like God just dropped it in my spirit. And like, almost like Zach, tell my mom, like tell her. I was deceived a little more won't hurt. And he was deceived. But in that moment, God scooped him up, you know? And so that's what I would say. Well, I love that imagery of the the crosses because I just think, you know, the work that Christ did on the cross when when we place our faith in Jesus, it, yeah. he substitutes his sinlessness for our mm-hmm. for our sinfulness, past, present, future, yeah. at that right. moment. And it's it's a once and for all, one time. That's it. You're God's. 
and nothing can do it, neither height nor depth nor angels or demons or anything under heaven and earth right. can separate right. you. And, and so right. that, I think that truth is a truth that needs to be known and remembered because there is this deception, yeah. I think, yeah. sometimes within the church and sometimes just within yeah. our, our, our human minds that yes. unless we, you know, go to God with every single little thing that happens that yeah. somehow we're going to be separated him from him. Right. From eternity. And, and so I just, yeah. the hope of Jesus is so much deeper and greater than that. Yeah. And, and I do love what you said about the deception, because I think that's true. Yeah. Our family has lost, has, has lost family members also. Yeah. Um, who have taken their lives and it is just yeah. a, uh, to understand that there is that that it's not a selfish choice right. and that's something that you know it is not a selfish choice that is being consciously made there is a deception there is a um yeah there's there's a deception there and and the enemy is yeah. the enemy yeah, yeah. and they, so exactly yeah. And so, and, you know, and when you, but then we know that the Lord, you know, the, the, the enemies, you know, he's already been defeated. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, well, and I love that the thing that you talk about most about Zach is his grace. And if we all had just a little bit more of that, this, this world would be such a better place. And I, I love that Zach is kind of your, you, he still lives in you, you know, he, his, his voice yeah. comes out as you're, you're processing things and just that you're able mm -hmm. to, to carry him with you and to carry that grace as a gift. And could you, yes. you, I know we're, we, we're running a little short on time probably, but um, I love the story that you told one specific story about how Zach influenced without preaching, influenced a friend. Yeah. Can you talk yes. about that? About oh. how, even after his passing, how this friend came to know the Lord? Yes. Um, yes. Zach played the Xbox with people all over. And it was his thing. Um, he wasn't married. He didn't have children. So, you know, this was his outlet. And, you know, I was good with it. But then every once in a while, and he'd say, Mom, can I just, let me finish this game, you know? And I would hear him talk, you know, before, whenever he'd stay with me, I would hear him talk to these people. And you don't realize that, I, I should have realized, but, you know, Zach never met a stranger. And he was, he just, he just loved everybody. I don't care how old, it didn't matter, baby, it didn't matter. But, so he played the Xbox, this online game with, you know, these people for years, they, years. And this one guy in particular, he um, reached, we became friends after Zach passed on Facebook because they, they were mourning. They were just in shock. They couldn't, I mean, they, they even quit. They had their little team, you know, and they just all quit. They couldn't even do it anymore. And then they picked it back up to play with my youngest son after all of that. But um, anyway, so this guy, was played with Zach for years. And after he died, it was a couple months after Zach died, I got a message from him. And he um, said to me, he said, I, you know, Mr. Mrs. Carnes, I really, um, I really, I hope I'm not bothering you, you know, but I, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be um, baptized tomorrow. And I said, oh, well, that's great. Okay. And he said, yeah, I just wanted you to know. And I wish Zach was here so I, so he would know. And I said, well, I'm sure that he probably knows. I said, can I ask what, I mean, what happened or, you know, what made you decide now to do this? And I had no idea about his life or anything. And he said, well, honestly, I've been an atheist. I did not believe in God and none of my family believes in God. And he said, so I never, I never believed in God. And he said, and I've struggled with depression so bad and suicidal thoughts um, throughout my life. But here recently, it was after Zach died, um, he said it was really bad. And I was, re I was thinking about how to take my life. And he said, I was sitting in my living room and I said, okay, okay, God, if you're real, then you will take this from me right now. And he said, and in that moment, he said, God did. 
He took every suicidal thought, every feeling, he took it from me in that moment. And then the kid prayed for me. He recorded a prayer for me. And I said, what? This guy didn't even know about the Lord. So then I said, okay, like, I'm so proud of you. And I said, so did Zach talk to you about the Lord? And he said, no, ma'am. I said, no, no, he just lived it. And Zach lived, Zach lived it. He lived his struggles. He never, I mean, he told him about, you know, him going on the missions trip. He would talk to him about um, going to church. He, you know, he just lived it. He would share, oh, I can't talk. I've got home groups or, oh, you know, like, or I can't play right now or wait till I get home. He just shared his life. And he never, never condemned the guy, never poked at him, never did any of those things. And he led him to the Lord just through his life, just his life. I love it. And I know that's just one of many stories of how Zach and how his story are just leaving these ripple effects on the world. It is. I just, I love that picture of all of those crosses you can just hang on oh, to that and they're just image. beautiful. Yeah. They are the most perfect cr- crosses. Like they're not patinaed or anything. They are bright, shiny, gold crosses without any blemish. They are just, I mean, and it was so funny because I shared that. Um, I had shared that on Facebook and it popped up in my memories yesterday and I had forgotten that dream. And then I was reminded of it. But that is one of... Um, many dreams and and visions that the lord has given our family um that's like just downloaded straight from from him you know and what he's doing and it's so much bigger um i mean his ways are bigger and and we don't know his plan like i don't i don't know the whole plan but i know that um there's a lot to do here and I know that Zach, he would not, he would be really upset if I did not keep going. <laughs> like he would be, because that's what he loved the most about me. Well, shiny gold crosses is a perfect transition into talking about jewelry. So this, I mean, it seems like yes. an un- unlikely thing to spring out of your experience, but tell us how did a jewelry line come out of Zach's story and, and tell us about it and, and where we can find it. You're actually wearing some of it. <laughs> oh, I'm, yes, I'm wearing some of it. And I've got some pieces here. Um, so after I, I'm someone who I do things with my hands, like I just have to do things. I love to create things. I love to make things. I was um, an event planner. You know, that's what I was just kind of starting whenever Zach passed. Um, well, I'd been doing it for a little bit, but and I'd love to do like make flower arrangements, just do things, I'm a doer. And whenever, I don't know, I just saw these leather earrings and I wanted to make them for my me and my daughters. And I said, oh, I can get that machine. And okay, well, if I still do some, you know, events, I could make signs, although I didn't want to do events. And then I had a women or the conference coming up. Um, it was in October. So Zach died at the end of June and this was in October. So it was in September that I got this machine and I made it like a couple pairs of earrings. And it's like, I shared it on Facebook and, you know, kind of like, I'm still alive. I am here and this is what I'm playing with now, you know, not to sell it or anything. I was just letting everyone know in my world that I was alive. And people said, oh, are you going to ship? Will you ship? And how, where can I get them? And I said, what? Oh, well, okay. So I made, I had a, um, I had a vendor table for the conference that I was also helping to do. And I said, I do not want to do events anymore. I, I can't, I, I just physically can't do it. And so I put jewelry on the table. But before that happened, as I made that decision to not do it for event planning um, and do, you know, make some earrings or whatever, it was one evening, I, it just all just dropped, the Lord just downloaded it. And I realized that that was the outlet, not, not to the extent that it is now, but that that was the outlet that God was giving me to um, share about Zach and our story and what God had done and then 
all of a sudden the anchors, you know, it was like, and I, so I was messaging on my phone to my kids and I said, oh my gosh, I can do this and I can do this. And, and it was just like, God just gave me this whole thing. And I, it started from that. And I mean, I had no idea. And as um, it was like the harder I grieved during that time, the more creative I became. And I, and then it just, it's such a passion that I'm so excited about it. I'm so thankful that the Lord gave me this, you know, to heal because he did that. This was my healing. This was my therapy. Um, and it's just, it's been an amazing journey. And so we, I've, like I said, I've relocated to Florida. So I have jewelry and a couple little salons in Coppers Cove, Texas, where I lived. And then I have jewelry in a couple of salons here in Florida and a little gift shop that just opened up. And then I'm going into an art gallery um, this week. So, and I have my website, it's robincarnes.com. Um, and that's and Robin with a Y. Robin with a Y and it's K-A-R-N-S, not, there's no E, no C, K-A-R-N-S. Um, and on there you can read Zach's story and there's a letter to the moms, the warrior moms. And I have, and then after I moved to, well, I, I kind of got stuck in Florida with the quarantine and I had no idea that God was actually bringing me back to my hometown. It was that's a whole nother probably podcast, but what the Lord did in that was, um, it was amazing. I mean, it's amazing. I have a new little condo that's, it's just amazing. But anyways, these are, this is a copper warrior cuff. This is a small one. And I also, um, this is the copper. And then I have, this is the brass and it has the sword. Yeah. So for those of you that are listening to the audio podcast, we also have a YouTube channel and we will post the video so you can actually see pictures or you can go to Robin's website at robincarns.com. Um, but yeah, these are, and so the warrior, you're referring to warrior moms, right? That have gone through yeah. the loss of a child or have a child struggling with addiction and just that idea yes. of persevering and yes, or and supporting and moving forward with your Yes, and I even have an armor up um, cuff that I also do bracelet that um, it, it's for my daughter actually, but it has wound up being something that has a lot of the moms really love that concept because it was for us, you know, me and my daughter, that I the warrior was for me, and then the armor up was for Brianna because in her, you know, at her age and her season, her walk where she is that's what she wanted was the reminder to armor up, you know, for everything that the, that we have to go through. And um, so I do a lot of mother daughter, you know, gift sets like that with the warrior and the armor up. And I do a lot of leather stuff. There's a lot, I do a lot of things um, and it just keeps growing. And you're wearing your shield of faith earrings. Yes. I'm wearing my shield of faith earrings. A lot of these are, um, I love the patina things and you know with the turquoise you can see the back has more of the turquoise but oh, I didn't even know that that's beautiful yes yes and then with the I don't have any of the brass shields right now but I, I just I, I love these and I'm and I, I'm very realistic you know like they're not perfect they look like they've been you know in war and Battle um, tested right uh, yes <laughs> so that's what, you know, and I, and I also think that with moms, even if you haven't lost a child or have struggled with, um, you know, many trials with your children yet, you're still a warrior. Moms are warriors because they are always praying for their children, no matter what, you know, how big or small, you know, the trial may be. That's what we do. Amen. Well, I love that. Well, Robin, we, um, I guess we pretty much covered it. Yeah. If our listeners want to hear more and find your jewelry, visit your website at robincarns.com, R-O-B-Y-N-K-A-R-N-S. 
And, um, and I do love that you have Zach's story there and you, you have a picture yeah. and even a little slideshow of Zach's life. I love it. So yeah. definitely yeah, visit you. Robin's website and, um, we're just going to close in prayer for you today, but thank you so much. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how much, I mean, I understand this was not easy for you and for you to use your testimony and, and go through a painful conversation so that other women can find hope is just, that's got to be God. So thank you, Robin. Yeah, thank you. And now can I ask also for, um, before we pray that, yeah. you know, we, we talk about the prayer for Saturday, the prayer yes. for our nation Absolutely. and uh, the prayer for repentance. Um, because I think that is so important. This week is so important. Um, so I would like to make sure that that is mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Pray. Thank yeah, you. definitely. So prayer for our nation on Saturday. Yes. Yes. The, that's the, the day of prayer, right? The day of prayer and repentance for, and everybody's going to be at the white house and it's going to be a big thing. Yes. I'm going to post, um, I think I'm going to post that on, I'll post a link to that. Um, but actually it'll be by the time this airs, that would be over, but okay. still I'll post a link anyway, cause it's never right. too late to pray together and corporate. That's prayer. Right. So yes. <laughs> right. yes, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, how else can we just be praying for you personally? You know, um, just there's been a lot of um, really amazing things that the Lord has done just in the past uh, in the past week, honestly. And there are things that I know He's orchestrating and He's doing. Um, he's doing things. I don't know exactly what they are, but just to um, you know, keep me covered as I walk these things out with whatever He does. That would be great. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. God, we just thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for Robin and just the courage and the, the boldness that it took for her to come and just um, that it takes for her to speak about Zach's story and her experiences and just the way that she loves you so much and glorifies you and praises you even through the probably worst nightmare of any mom. Lord, I just, I pray that you would continue to strengthen her, continue to heal her and to bring comfort and peace to her when she needs it. We lift up her entire family as they grieve and continue to grieve the loss of Zach, his friends. But we just thank you. I just, I love that picture of all of those crosses, all of the, the spiritual fruit that is coming and will continue to come through Zach's life and just the testimony of his faith. Yes. Thank Father, you. we thank you that you, uh, that you are a redeemer. You're a reclaimer of pain and suffering and all of the trials on this earth that the, in, that the enemy intends for evil. You mm. have already been victorious over and you continue to reclaim them and repurpose and recycle for your good purposes. God, thank you for that. Thank you. We praise you for being redeemer. We praise you for being healer. We praise you for being sovereign and for going before us and for marking out the path of our lives. And we lift up our story. Lord, we lift up the story of our children, our children's stories, and it's so hard to place them in your hands. But just as Robin prayed for Zach, just God, we, we give our children to you, whatever they're struggling with, whatever they're going through. And we, we trust you with their story. God, I thank you for all the warrior moms out there that are battling on their knees for their kids. And for all of those who battled for years or months or decades and have lost children, God, you are the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You are good. You are the giver of every good gift. And uh, we just thank you for that promise. I just pray for, we pray for our nation. Lord, we lift up yes. our nation to you. Again, you are sovereign. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You raise up leaders and you tear them down and you use every single one for your good purposes. We trust you with the story of our nation for those of us in the United States, for those in other places. Yes. We trust you with the world. 
Mm. God, we acknowledge you as the ultimate ruler. And we pray that your sovereign hand would guide and direct our leaders, would raise up the leaders that you have appointed to be the leaders of our countries, that you would yes. move in the hearts of leaders to do your purposes, God, that our nation, that our, our world would be full of your glory. Thy kingdom yeah. come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I lift up Robin to you, God, and just um, the things that you're working in her life and the things that, that you've been doing even in this past week, God, we just pray that, that you would um, give her clear vision for the next steps even when the, the long-term future seems uncertain and cloudy, that you would just give her a lamp to her feet, Lord, that she would know where to put one foot in front of the other and that the next right thing to do in her life and that you would bless her efforts and that you would glorify yourself in it, that you would give her godly wisdom, not the wisdom that the world gives, Lord, that you would just surround her with people that will confirm or um, challenge her on, on things that you'd give her godly counsel to help her to make good decisions and to um, just walk in the abundant, amazing Jeez. plans that you have for her life. And God, we just thank, thank you for you, this God. time and just pray that this would be just a time that, that would glorify you and, um, and yes, point, point people to you and to your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.